Home Depot and Lowe's, two of America's biggest companies, just reported some very concerning trends about the U.S. consumer and their financial health that suggest that the economy in 2024 is continuing its downward shift and one that could have actually a big impact on the housing market very, very soon. With Home Depot reporting a big miss on revenue as high interest rates hurt sales. Meanwhile, the earnings of Lowe's fell 17% as same-store sales skidded for the sixth consecutive quarter which suggests that fewer customers are going into these stores and wanting to spend money on these big ticket home renovation projects. Because that's what these companies, Home Depot and Lowe's, make their money off of, folks. People renovating their houses, doing additions on their houses. as well. According to the CEO of Home Depot, in ticket transactions, those over $1,000 were down 6.5% compared to the first quarter last year due to softer engagement in larger discretionary projects where customers typically use financing to fund the projects such as kitchen and bath remodels. Which is, of course, a concerning sign for the health of the U.S. economy because if the economy was really robust and was actually really, really strong, I think you would see homeowners not really bat an eye about doing an addition or doing a renovation. But rather, they don't feel that way. Consumers feel pessimistic about the future. They're concerned about inflation and they're increasingly concerned about an increase in unemployment. With the University of Michigan survey of consumers showing that the expected change in unemployment during the next year has spiked up to the highest level that we have seen since 2011, everyone. So what this graph is showing is that consumers more and more are expecting an increase in unemployment over the next year. And I think that's because consumers know that the uh, underlying health of the economy is suspect at best. They see a lot of these big layoff announcements from corporations. They see their friends get laid off. They see their hours get cut. And consumers know that maybe now is not the time to do big ticket items like a home renovation. Now, what's crazy, everyone, though, is despite the issues that Home Depot and Lowe's are having, uh, their revenues are down about 3 to 4% year over year on same store sales. And uh, in the case of Lowe's, the revenues are way down compared to the last three years. Despite these revenue headwinds, the stock prices for both Home Depot and Lowe's are still near all-time highs. For instance, you can see Home Depot is trading at $336 a share, which is down a little bit from its peak a couple months ago. It's actually down by about almost 20%. However, it's still way higher than it was before the pandemic and still near an all-time high. So these declines in revenue and issues, they aren't really causing a major crash in Home Depot stock price. The same goes for Lowe's, everyone. Before the pandemic, Lowe's was trading at $120 a share, and now they're trading at $224 a share. So Lowe's stock price has doubled since the pandemic started, even though their quarterly revenues are now starting to slip back down closer to pre-pandemic norms. So the, the revenues at Lowe's are starting to take a hit closer to pre-pandemic levels. Actually, in the first quarter of 2024, they were down 17%. Year over year in the second quarter, they were down by about four or five percent. So we got contracting revenues at lows and yet a stock price, which is still at a really high level. And so you have to wonder what's going on there with the stock prices of these companies. We have deteriorating financial performance, but it seems the people in the stock market, they're continuing to buy the shares at a fairly high rate. Are we going to see the stock prices for these companies go down? Well, I'm not an expert in projecting stocks. However, I think this is further support for the notion that we are in a, a stock market bubble right now, everyone, because we see more and more of these companies reporting negative uh, earnings reports, and yet um, you see stock prices still near all-time highs, and you have to wonder, like, what's going on there? Why are the prices so high? You know, the S&P 500 overall has actually rallied back up to 5,300, and the Dow Jones is resting near 40,000, so these stock indexes are just still pushing up way up to all-time highs. And what's crazy to me is like, you look at what the Dow Jones is today at 40,000, just compare it to what it was like in 2007 at the peak of the last bubble, it was 13,000. So literally these stock indexes have tripled since the peak of the last bubble. That's crazy folks. But one thing we need to watch out for with the stock market and the housing market more broadly is housing, everyone. Housing tends to be a leading indicator of what's going on. Housing and real estate tends to lead the rest of the economy in the economic cycle. And the things we're seeing in housing right now do not look so good. And the things we're seeing in housing are one of the reasons why Home Depot and Lowe's are, are, are struggling. Namely, we're seeing home buyer demand and home sales just remain near 30-year lows. 
like the buyer demand, it's just not there in the housing market due to 7% mortgage rates, due to home prices still being near all time high levels. And the result is seasonally adjusted home sales from the National Association of Realtors showed us at 4.2 million home sales in March, 2024. Uh, the April numbers are gonna get released soon, um, but the April numbers are likely to be similar, similar to March. And you can see th this home sale figure around 4 million a year I mean, this is uh, scraping the bottom of the barrel of the last two and a half decades in terms of home buyer demand. And so I know there's a lot of people out there who think, you know, the housing market is still booming. There's people out there who try to say that like buyers are still in the market, but they're not. The sales are way, way down. And I, I bet they're actually probably going to continue to go down over the rest of the year unless we see meaningful relief on both home prices and mortgage rates. And so when the home sales are so low, that means that fewer people are moving, right? Fewer people are moving from one house to another or one city to another. Fewer people are hiring moving companies to do that. And fewer people are buying the things that you would need to buy when you move, namely materials and items to fix up your house. Because when you go to sell a house, right? There's oftentimes a lot of things you need to fix before you sell the house. So you'd make a trip to Home Depot or Lowe's to do that. Conversely, when you buy a house, in the first year, there's probably a lot of things you want to fix up as well. So you'd make a trip to Home Depot or Lowe's to go do that. But those trips, they're not really happening at the same rate right now. And this is something that the CFO of Home Depot touched on in their most recent earnings call. He said that if we think about the lock-in effect in the housing market and its impact on housing turnover, that we've seen two years of a significant decrease in housing turnover to the point that we're really at a sort of set of historical lows. And this is a problem for their business model because when a customer buys or sells a home, they spend more in that year than any year when they don't. And so there's no doubt that we're missing some of that project demand and that's what's weighing on our sales. And so I think people at Home Depot and Lowe's, they, they have this hope that, you know, the Fed's gonna come in and cut interest rates at the end of this year and that that's just gonna re-stimulate demand in the housing market and that everything is gonna be fine once the Fed decides to cut interest rates if they decide to cut interest rates. And this is a mentality that's really starting to concern me out there in the economic and financial markets because it just seems like people can't get away from this idea that all the issues in the economy right now are gonna be solved if and when the Fed cuts rates. And the longer that we go without the Federal Reserve cutting interest rates, you know, the more problematic things are gonna become. The more that having a 25 year low in home sales is gonna drag on the economy, the more that having a 15 year high in credit card debt is gonna drag on the economy. And I think a lot of people are misplacing their hope that when the rates are eventually cut, that there's just gonna be this big surge in demand in the housing market in particular. Because you know when I look at the data and actually poll you guys on my channel and I ask you questions about how you feel about the housing market, something becomes very, very obvious. And that's that most of you are nowhere close to buying a house, everyone. Um, because I asked you guys, what are your current thoughts on buying a house right now? Only 7% of you said desperately wanting to buy. Meanwhile, 16% of you said kind of want to buy, but not in a rush. Meanwhile, 60% of you said zero interest in buying until prices drop 30%, while 18% of you said already bought, just tracking the market. So of the 19,000 people who voted in this poll, which represents a pretty good cross-section of people in the housing market, everyone, you guys are a pretty good mix of first-time home buyers, repeat home buyers, investors. Well, 78% of you are either saying you already bought or you have zero interest in buying until prices drop 30%. And so that suggests to me that we are not gonna see any type of imminent recovery in housing demand until prices drop meaningfully, right? I mean, this is the, the thing that really needs to happen uh, before buyers are gonna come back in and the home sales are gonna go back up and all of a sudden people are gonna wanna do renovation projects again. Prices are gonna need to drop substantially because when prices drop substantially, that's what makes it way easier to afford the down payment and that's what makes it way easier to afford the monthly payment. Let's take a look at this quick little mortgage calculator I put together, everyone. If you buy a house for 450,000 in today's market at a 7% mortgage rate, that's gonna mean that your total payment inclusive of mortgage, taxes, insurance, and maintenance is 3,200 a month everyone, which is wild. That's almost $40,000 a year to just buy like a normal house in today's market. But now one way for that to get cheaper is for mortgage rates to come down. Like, so for instance, if the mortgage rate went down to 6%, which would be about a hundred basis point decline, that would knock down your total payment to 2,900 a month, about an 8% reduction. And so if 
kind of the best case scenario plays out and the Fed does a bunch of rate cuts over the next year and the mortgage rate goes down to 6%, the average home buyer is saving 8% on their monthly payment, not very much. However, watch what happens when we lower home prices. If we were to lower the home price on this house from $450,000 to $350,000, a 22% decline, and keep mortgage rates the same, all of a sudden our total monthly payment goes down to less than $2,500 a month or a 22% reduction. The benefit is your mortgage payment goes way down because your mortgage is lower and you might even find some relief maybe on your taxes and insurance. And so really what that proves folks is that all this discussion about marginal changes in mortgage rates it's not that meaningful. It's not gonna do much for the market. Rather, we need to see 20, 25, 30% declines in home value to unlock buyer demand and push sales up. And me personally, I'm betting on the biggest price declines in the US housing market happening in the most overvalued metros. The most overvalued metros where inventory of homes for sale is spiking. One such area could be Dallas, Texas. Home prices in Dallas are 34% overvalued compared to the long-term norms. There's lots of potential downside here. There's lots of potential downside in a market like Tampa. Prices are also 33% overvalued there. Inventory is increasing. Similar thing in Charlotte, everyone. Charlotte's a market I don't really talk about too much, but home prices there are 34% overvalued. We haven't seen inventory go up as much in Charlotte. So in the short term, prices might remain stable, but there's still lots of downside here. And if you're a premium member on Reventure app, you can actually sort the most overvalued housing markets and find the places where prices could drop the most. You can also apply filters to restrict cities to the ones with higher population or cities where inventory is growing significantly to then get a short list of some of the markets where prices are most in the crosshairs of declines. And to be clear, everyone, I'm not you know, saying these things to be bearish, uh, intentionally bearish on the market. I'm simply showing you the data of what needs to happen in the housing market to bring buyers back in and the metros that are most exposed to these declines in prices. Because if you're a buyer and investor, you need to be on top of this data so you can make a more informed decision about when and where to buy a house. Lastly, everyone, I have a special request from you guys out there. If you are on the Reventure app mailing list, like if you went on Reventure app at some point and put your email in, could you do me a big favor and go to your spam folder and search Reventure app to see if some of my emails to you guys are getting caught in the spam folder. Some people have said that this is happening to them. I send you guys some updates on the market. If you wanna receive them, make sure to check your spam folder and report not spam. And of course, make sure to go to www.reventure.app right now so you can find out which cities are most overvalued and are at the biggest risk of home price declines in 2024.